dang it. Hi, Bob Canote here, and on this episode of the Tool Shed, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this machine right here, and it's the Nantong 9 by 42 inch vertical milling machine. Now this is a machine that has changed the utility of this shop more than anything else, and that might even include getting heat in the place. Because what this has enabled us to do is do most of our machine work in-house. Now that doesn't mean that this is an actual production machine. This is a great machine for prototyping and doing one-off kind of things, but uh, it's not going to be something that you're going to use in series production of parts. <clears throat> now what this thing is, is a uh, an electric motor basically and a belt drive unit up here and what all this does is it spins this uh, part right here and that's the quill and what you do is you put a cutting tool up there that rotates in this manner and the way that tool goes in the machine is you got a collet that the shaft of the tool fits into and there's a number of different size tools there and you slide it up into the quill and then you use this tool up here pull it down and rotate it and what that does is it draws that collet up into the quill against the taper and squeezes it down and so what you get is a spinning tool all right and what we can do is we can move the table this way we can move the table this way we can move the quill up or down, and we can actually move the table up or down in a more precise manner than just jerking the quill up and down. And we can then uh, feed that tool over parts that uh, we have affixed to the table. Now there's a couple of ways that we can actually hold parts on the table. And that one of those would be these things up here. You've got these step blocks here and you got a bolt with a t-nut down at the bottom and then a nut up on top and that would that clamps the part down and uh, you could have two or three of these or more if you needed them uh, given that we have a number of these here and another set of these out in the welding area for the same purpose and we could also put instead of the tool we could put this this chuck up in there and do do drilling operations and we can also use these collets for drilling operations which are actually more uh, accurate than using a chuck but you don't have one of those for every diameter tool that or diameter drill that you have okay now took that out of there because during the course of this presentation I'm probably gonna cut myself severely on this tool. So we'll get that out of the way. <coughs> Other ways of holding the part on the table, you could just have a grungy old vise like this and use these bolts with T-nuts on them. The slots are cut in it so that you can Accommodate the T-nut and bolt it down, do the same thing on this side. And you can, of course, square the vise uh, very accurately using a dial indicator um, in the quill up here. We're not going to get into a lot of detail. I just want to explain the function of the machine. Another way of holding a part is with a rotary table. and you would clamp that down in the same way. And we've got T-slots here on the table, which, which turns for us, which rotates. What we can do now is we can actually make circular features. We could drill a hole of any diameter that we wished. We could cut the outside diameter of a circular part. Uh, we could also Drill, uh, drill holes in a bolt circle if we chose to, very, very accurately. So 
um, this is a this is a great feature right here what we've got is a part that I made for the champ car this would be the uh, lower half of the uh, rear cross member that holds the rear suspension and the differential and um, this is the perfect tool for doing that we've also made brake hats on this machine for the champ car prototypes for that uh, which didn't work out but we're going to do the same thing again this winter when we when we go to a big brake kit on the car so that's how you do it and the way that you the way that you um, you actually uh, do the precision cuts or set the machine is through these dials right here. You can see that as I rotate the table outward, I've got numbers here, graduations in thousandths of an inch that uh, I can use to, once I've got a starting point, set this very, very accurately. And you can also see that I've got the same thing here for this direction. And you can see that I've got the same thing here for moving the table up or down which is all well and good that's how things have been done since the beginning of, uh, of vertical milling machines but the truth is that if you look here we've got a little bit of slop in here and in fact if we look at the dial we can see that we've got about four thousand three thousandths of an inch slop in the lead screw that moves us back and forth you know so if i want to change direction I got to take that into account every time I move this table, which you can do. People have been doing that since time began on these machines. But the really great addition to this tool is right here. Now, first of all, the machine cost, I think it was $2,200 10 years ago. Uh, and uh, it was a pretty low time machine at that point, but it's a Nantong, which I never heard of before, and I've never seen a Nantong machine since. So it's going to be one of those low buck uh, Chinese knee mill clone type things. But it's been great. It's been really, really good. But fundamentally, we had to, uh, there, you know, its utility was somewhat limited by my ability to compensate for that accurately which of course would improve over time but this thing right here this thing is magic this is called a digital readout and this thing when you throw the switch on comes to life and what this thing does for you is all that slack in the, uh, in the lead screws on all three axes that you have to compensate for? Well, guess what? This thing kind of does it for you. I haven't adjusted or compensated for that dial ever since I got one of these about eight years ago. And what that does for you, if you watch this up here, see that's the decimal point right there. What I just did is I just moved this table two ten thousandths of an inch that way. Two one thousandths of an inch is one tenth the thickness of a human hair, I believe it is. That's a pretty fine movement. So I don't have to look at numbers on dials anymore. If I want to move this thing two and a half inches, there you go. Okay, lock it down. That's perfect. Okay. Same thing with the y-axis, and the same thing with the z-axis. Now, if you go online, like some of the uh, large uh, industrial tool suppliers like MSC and, uh, and the others that are around, you can find these things for about $1,000, $1,200 and they got tons of features and they were great but that's half what i paid for the whole machine so i went to ebay one of my favorite places and i found this one for 320 dollars and that was like eight years ago seven eight years ago and i had to install it myself but that was pretty easy because hey i got a milling machine i can make the parts so um so I did that, 
and it's been just a wonderful thing. It's operated absolutely glitch-free, just as well as anything that I would have paid $1,200 for. It's one of these Chinese clone type things, and there's not even a brand on it. All it says is DRO2 on it. So, and of course, we've got the manual here that is in uh, Manderglish, which means it's pretty much worthless. But there's tutorials online that, uh, that give you instruction on how to use a DRO in general and they all apply to this so it's very very easy to use now this if you look down below here you can use it as a calculator you can use it to drill holes on an angled line like if you got a line of holes that need to go out 45 degrees to the table it'll calculate that for you given the parameters that you enter holes on a radius bolt circle if you want to mill a radius on a corner of your part, you can do that also. So this thing is wonderful. In fact, I want to find one of these that I can put on my lathe. Even though it's a tiny little lathe, it'd, it'd be a great addition to it. So <clears throat> in addition to that, another thing that I needed was a boring tool. <clears throat> This is what you put in the machine in order to drill the bore holes of specific sizes. You're also, I also had to invest in, um, it came with the collets, but it had nothing to put it in. So I found this rack online, I think it was $30, and it's got an ABS plastic exterior, but it's kind of heavy foam on the inside but it's been working great. Um, I made this, this rack here out of a piece of square aluminum. I bought a 10-foot piece of this aluminum uh, just because it was cheap at the place I normally buy metals, and I've been using this for a ton of things ever since. If you look on the back side here, you can see that using the mill, I made these two brackets. <laughs> And uh, aluminum arm actually made three of them until I found the, the length that worked properly. And uh, this actually works really, really well. You got to have something that puts your tooling as close to, uh, as close at hand as you possibly can. What I'd really like to do is to put a little tray in here that slides in and out that has the cutting tools on it. Because right now I've got it stored in my lathe. Got the tool stored in my lathe bench, and uh, just not real convenient. Another thing that I added to this machine that really saved a ton of time is this thing up on top here. And this is the thing that uh, allows you to change tools in three or four seconds when it would take 20 seconds otherwise. Now, Ordinarily, what you would do to put a tool in here, you would take your collet, your tool, put it up in here, and instead of that little air ratchet turning the draw, there's a, there's a draw bar that goes from here. You can see the nut for it up here, okay, that turns that thing and it runs all the way through the machine and taps into a hole on the bottom of the... Uh, bottom of the collet that you can see right here and you'd have to actually somehow find a way of holding this tool which wants to fall out and damage itself and the bed hold the brake and then turn that wrench at the or turn that nut at the end of the draw bar or draw bolt at the same time so you really needed three hands this thing you just you just uh, do that, loosen this way, tighten that way. You gotta lube it periodically, obvious, obviously, because it's an air tool. And that thing, I think, was $140. <clears throat> you can find those, uh, again, the big supply houses will have a top rate one of those things that um, will cost you about $700. 
that one was about $140. And really, if you look at it, basically it's just a butterfly air ratchet with a, with a lever here, which, which flips the, the handle on it either way. And I had to fabricate these parts in order to put it on there, but hey, you know what? I got a vertical mill, I can do that. Now when I first got this machine, a friend of mine, a longtime friend of mine who is a machinist, I told him that I was gonna get it and he said, you know, Bob, that machine will fundamentally change the way you think. And that sounded rather odd to me, but I can say that honestly, this thing makes you think carefully about the process that you're about to do because you can waste a lot of tools and a lot of material if you get the sequence of events out of, out of sync. What it requires that you do is look at the plan that you're using to make whatever part you're going to make and figure out a, an order of procedures or of steps that you need to, to perform because you may find that for example, if I had cut out the center all the way through, now I got to figure out a way of holding that part. You know, I had this thing held down with a long bolt that passed through it. Um, that would have been the last operation to actually do the, do the final boring on the inside of that, that mount. So what it, what it does is it brings order to a chaotic mind. And Captain Chaos needs all of that he can get. So that's it for this edition of the Tool Shed. Next week we're going to be showing you the second part of our Black Hills Road Trip series. And you're going to want to see that. We had a lot of fun. So if you like what you see, subscribe, like, share, and we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles. Well, that's Shakespeare, Midsummer Night's Dream. We're not barbarians out here. <laughs>